Hey YouTube, today we're going to take apart a gumball machine. Can't wait. Let's, cry, let's go dive right in. For this, you're going to need a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a slot screwdriver. Basically, this is a 1985 um, carousel gumball machine. Got this you know, from a thrift shop, which I really thought was a great deal. Um, it basically has a slot on top, a slot screw on top, glass, a glass globe, metal uh, metal frame, a locking mechanism, and a little dust cap for I guess where the candy drops down. And this one was actually a um, it's a missing the cap, so I put a little card there just for the heck of it. And yeah, there's another Phillips down there too. Of course, this one's made in China. I'm pretty sure there's you know, a replica of one of those ones we had before, but it's still a carousel unit, so it's awesome. So, let's go ahead and take this apart and see what's inside. I'm going to go ahead and take off from, take it from the bottom first. I'm going to take off this. Fill up screw, put this to the side. And this slides off. What I did was actually there was supposed to be a, uh, a door here by, you know, seeing that there was missing that door at the thrift shop, I kind of bargained with them to give me a discount on it. But what I did was I just basically put a plastic uh, card, you know, punched a hole in it and taped uh, some metal foil onto it. Not metal foil, but adhesive foil so it won't move. Uh, it's just a quick fix. So anywho, on the bottom of this thing, all metal construction, I like it. That screw goes in the center there, uh, that it lines on this side. The mechanism is actually quite simple from the back. And you can see that there's a few points that are in there. And I tried it out and it, it worked, and that's what I loved about this thing. Um, we'll go ahead and put that to the side. Now we're gonna take apart the top. So typically when you fill this thing, you know, there are instructions about, you know, not to over tighten either this, this top cap, or there's another screw that holds down the globe. So you want to be really careful. So what we're going to do is take apart, get a slot screwdriver and just slightly loosen this one up. Careful the cap. I'm taking the top off. It's a special little uh, slot, slot screw and nut. I'm going to put this to the side too. Take the top cap off. Again, nice, it's metal. Um, and here's the fun part. There's a little nut, I think it's a, Look at what type of size nut that is. From I have a five sixteenth uh, socket. I'm just gonna slot right in there. You could probably use a little um, crescent wrench or adjustable wrench or probably even a pliers. It's actually hand tight. You don't want to over tighten this, and or also crack the globe. But loosen it a little, and we just finish off the the rest by hand. Taking this thing off. Put this to the side again too. And there's this little frame that actually holds down a washer, and actually a gasket, and the globe. So this applies pressure to the globe so it won't move. So we put this to the side as well. And there's a little plastic, I don't think it's silicone, but it's um the plastic. Uh, gasket that goes right onto the globe. There's a little groove here that basically slides onto this so it won't move as much. Put that to the side as well. With that off, you take off the globe and it's a nice globe, no cracks, nothing. Very beautiful globe. Put that to the side. Now, on the bottom of the globe, there's another uh, gasket. Again, you have to be really careful. You don't want this to hit any metal hard surface or else it's going to cause it to um, scratch the glass or crack the glass. So we're putting this to the side as well. Right after that, I actually don't, didn't find any bolts in here. This, this goes right on. This is actually the hopper, or I think it's the hopper mechanism. Um, clearly it has instructions that says, um, I guess this top and front is over here. So I guess so in case you are working with it, you know, they won't have to, you know, they won't forget. 
but yeah, there's a little, there's a spring, I guess, for doors, so that it basically as, as it moves, let's put a quarter in there, as it moves, the hopper fills and pushes in and makes it rotate. Of course, that fell right out the bottom. Um, but yeah, this keeps it from overfilling. And I really think they really should put some screws here or something so it won't move. But long story short, with the coin in it, it just moves it and it goes to the hopper and your M&Ms or gumballs will actually get blocked by the stand fall into these little cavities, so these little hopper holes. So, so let's go ahead and take that off too. So we're taking off this little guide. Uh, again, just checking, make sure everything is there. Um, put that to the side. Here's the fun part. Now this is the, me the mechanism to do this, and this is uh, this little hopper thing. It's pretty neat. There's these little, it's a big cog, and you see that other cog in there down, that moves. Um, this is actually adjustable, which is neat. So in case you have bigger candies, you just basically untighten this little screw. You can actually move it to these different notches, and it, which makes it a bigger, bigger hole area. Now, it's going to fall in there. So I'm thinking if this goes in, and this is how much, um, as the as the candy falls into here and slots it, this is how much candy they're getting. So if it's a, a peanut M&M, you probably fit one or two peanut M&Ms in there. So if you want a handful of them, you have to probably open this, unscrew that, open it and make it wider. In fact, that's what I'm going to do right now, is I have M&Ms, peanut M&Ms. So what I'm going to do is loosen this thing up. Oops, let's switch to Phillips again. Loosen this up a little. Candy is smaller, so whatever. Okay. Let's slide this one up a little bigger so the hopper is a little bigger. So we, for every coin we throw in, we get at least two or three M&Ms or two or three um, peanut M&Ms. Screw that back down. Nice and snug. Uh, I would assume that's about two, two or three of them. Okay, so we're gonna put this back in there, but you know, before we do, if you guys wanna see it, how the mechanism works, I'm gonna put a coin in there. And just like in the ones, I guess, at those at the movie theaters or drugstores, you know, you put a coin in, slots on the bottom, you have to make sure it's aligned, that like horizontal, before it can actually move. And I'm gonna put it and you just turn it and it goes through. Let's see that in action in the, from the back. So we're going to put a coin in then, put it, and then what happens is that the coin goes to this little switch here and it pushes a little brass switch and acts as a key. And as you can see, there's a coin that goes right there. Not sure how well you can see that, but the coin is actually, whoop, it just went through past the brass area. And as it does it, it allows this cog to move and it basically slots through. And until it's on the floor again. But yeah, basically it lets it slot through one whole cycle, which is really, really nice. It's a really simple mechanism, but it's really cool to own. I always wanted one of these guys. That's why I bought it. So this one's virtually brand new, I guess. Um, I'm sure you could buy it on Amazon or something else like that, but um, it's, you know, I saw it at the thrift shop and, you know, I, it was in really, really good condition. I guess, you know, he bought it as a novelty gift, but I personally really love what, these things and have all these um, uh, contraptions. And it's like a simple, simple, simple vending machine, which I really love. I love the mechanics of it. Okay, so we're going to put it back together. There's not really much you really need to do here. In order to take this part off, we actually have to, I think, slide this whole thing out. But... I'm not sure how to do that. I'm going to assume I have to loosen some of these screws because it's clamping. It looks like the screw, these two screws are clamping against here, holding it, holding, holding the mechanism in. Um, but other than that, I'm looking at it. I don't think there's anything else holding this thing. I think that's those two screws are wedging 
against the metal frame and holding this thing together. That's what it looks like. Could be wrong, but since it works, I'm not going to do anything else with that. I'm just going to let it go. I did wipe all this stuff down with a, you know, with a, with, um, a sand, one of those, um, those cleaner wipers and those Kleenex and wipes and make sure that, you know, it was nice and clean. I'm pretty sure, again, if you buy it new, you know, I would probably still, you know, wipe it clean in case there's any other stuff on it through manufacturing. But anywho, long story short, putting it back together now. I'm going to, you know, coin, it really doesn't matter where the position is because it, it's pretty flexible or lenient and um, yeah, it basically slots into the to the guide. Let me see, and we're putting this one on, front facing. There really should be some sort of screw or something to hold these things down, but it doesn't seem like there's any screw holes for it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the next one on. This pole is nice and tight. Um, let's get the gaskets on. Gasket, make sure the lip is on top. It's kind of loose, but it should be okay with all the pressure going down. Glass globe. Nice and centered. Center that up. And make sure the ridge in here is going towards the glass, or is it the other way? Let's see. Nope, definitely towards the glass, because the other side's flat. Screw back on. Yeah, and make sure it's nice and centered so it's easy to put on. And good, that's centered. The nut. Just make sure it's finger tight. Don't want to over tighten it, but at the same time, I want to make sure everything's lined up. So I'm just lining up the gaskets again. Now that's a little tighter. Lining up the top, lining up the bottom. Make sure everything is aligned and centered. Yay! And I'm gonna tighten that finger tight again. Again, it goes downward. Um, even though there's a bell on top. <laughs> It doesn't fit that way, it goes downward. So, that being said, just a little finger tight, a little tighter. I'm not gonna actually screw it really hard down because I think it's gonna crack the globe. As long as it's nice and snug, it's fine. And it doesn't move. Tighten it just a little more. Okay, nice and move, doesn't move at all. Perfect. So, time to put the cap on, but before we put the cap on, I'm gonna put some candy in it. Of course, it's in you know, m &Ms. Hmm. Make sure this is really, really centered. Okay. Now that everything's nice and clean, I've already cleaned the glass already, I already cleaned the insides. I'm gonna add some items into this thing. Now this is a 11 ounce m and so let's start filling it up with two m &Ms. Okay, another bag of 10 ounces. Okay, 
Wait, before I do any more, I want to make sure this thing works. I want to make sure it works before I have to readjust. So, I'm going to grab one of the quarters that dropped to the ground. And try this out. Quarter. And I have two M&Ms. Okay, okay, let's do it again. Quarter put in, click, 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 click. So this should be, oops, four M&Ms. Yeah, so every time you put a quarter in, you get two M&Ms. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to fill the rest with M&Ms now. Yay, it works. Come on. Okay, that's 20 ounces, and of course, two M&Ms flew out onto the floor. Mmm. Very good. Tastes good. Okay. That's already 20, 22 ounces. We'll put, let's see how much we can fill in here. Check that up. Let's put another one in. Of course, we got the Halloween, not the Halloween, the Christmas uh, m we bought about a month ago, a month or two ago. It was on sale and clearance, so... I don't care about the color, as long as it's an M&M, and you know, it's peanut, and it's relatively fresh. Okay. So, there you have it. Three bags of M&M's. Fills up one of these things pretty well. That's about... 20, these, each of these are about um, 11, 11.4 ounces, so times that by 3, that's roughly, let's say, let's round down to 11, so 3, that's 33 ounces of M&M's in one of these, you know, I think there's a 12 inch um, carousel, 1985 carousel vending, dispensing gumball machine, so tap it back up, put the Top screw on. Phillips. Screw this down. Awesome. Okay. Ooh, it's heavier. Much heavier. Okay. okay. Nice and tight. Just a little snug. Of course, I should have put the base back on. But I guess it doesn't really matter. I could just... I'll slide it on its side for a sec and put this on its base. Again, this one's just a little finger tight. I don't want to get too tight. So cool, there we have it. 33 ounces of MMs, one jar. Perfect. Now that's gonna go on my work desk and quite possibly, you know, so I don't overeat my MMs instead of eating it from a from a jar. On my, my work desk, I have a dispenser, so every time I want an M&M, I'm going to put a quarter or a penny or whatever in it. Mmm, tastes good. Now, you're probably wondering, 
will this work with pennies and stuff? So it does. You actually use a dime. It'll fit a dime in there, and it'll still it'll still work. It doesn't matter whether it's a dime or a penny. It still it still works. So almost any coin. Um, I don't have a nickel with me, but you know if it could fit a penny, a dime, and a quarter, you know, I'm pretty sure it'll fit a nickel just fine. Um, let me see if I do have a nickel or not. I do. I do have a nickel. So if I put a nickel in here, it will be a good test would be if it could fit like a larger one, like a one dollar coin. But anywho, all done. So there you have it guys. It's a Caras 1985 carousel gumball machine that I filled with M&Ms. And it's pretty, it's very, very cool. You know, you set it to that setting and now you have, every time you put a quarter or every time it moves, you get two M&Ms out of here. So, very cool. Yum. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Mmm, yum. Good M&M.